Released in 2020, Genshin Impact is coming up on its fourth year. The game now has five regions, Onstead, Liyue, Inazuma, Sumeru and Fontaine. And Natlan will probably be coming up in 2024. But first off, what kind of game is Genshin Impact? Genshin is an open world gacha RPG. Let me explain this to you step by step. An open world game is a game where you can go in any direction in a sandbox world. A gacha game is a type of game where you pay premium for a currency, which you can also obtain an equivalent currency for free, but with this currency you use to roll for characters. In Genshin specifically, for example, if you are rolling for a character, you need to start rolling and around 74 do you start getting pity for your character. Once you reach 90, you are guaranteed to receive a 5 star. Usually, you will receive it early though, however, when Whenever you reach your character, it is not guaranteed to be the featured character. It is a 50-50 between the standard characters and the featured character. And in the next 50-50, you won't be a 50-50, you are guaranteed to get a featured character. Of course, paying is not the only method to get your characters. Some characters, like one of the most powerful in the game, called Xiangling, are given to you for free once you reach the Spiral Abyss, Floor 3. And lastly, an RPG. I think most of you already know what an RPG is if you play games. An RPG is a role-playing game. In Genshin Impact, you assume the role of the traveler, which you can choose to be a boy or a girl, and you go around Tevet together with your companion Paimon, looking for your sibling. On your quest, you will travel across all regions of Tevat. Naturally, the game being out for as long as it has, you have a lot of story to go through. You have Archon Quests, which are the main quests of the game, Character Story Quests, Character Hangouts, Events, World Quests, and even some Secret Quests. Of course, only the main story quests is required to progress the game. And even so, you can explore around most regions without restrictions. For each region that you pass through on your journey, the story on each one will only get better and better. Also, if you are a returning player to the game, you will notice quite a lot of quality of life updates. They just made the leveling up system for both artifacts, weapons and characters much more streamlined. You can even see what artifact sets other players are using on their characters and also the main artifact stats. If you haven't played to the main story to challenge the weekly bosses yet, they also added a new feature that lets you challenge said bosses through your logbook. If you are going to start to play this game right now, my biggest tip for you is to play as optimal as you want. The game is not that hard. Sure, there is some challenging content from time to time like the Spiral Abyss or some specific events, but overall the game is pretty easy. This segues nicely into my next point. The game is pretty much free to play friendly. Now I know what you might be thinking, this is a gacha game, how can this be free to play friendly? Now if the game is not that hard, it means you don't need that many powerful characters, correct? Correct. Of course, everyone likes pulling for characters in this game. However, if you are in the end game and already has a powerful selection of characters, you can just pretty much pull for whoever you like. Sure, having a character that you like to be powerful is the best combo you can get. And also, having a character that you really like visually, but the power is underwhelming, may not just be for you. For example, I really like Dia's design, however, I really don't like her kit and her power is quite underwhelming, so I mostly don't use her. But I also have plenty of other characters that I like, such as Ganyu, Nuvillette and Furina, that all three of them I like, and all three of them are pretty powerful. If you are wondering how much does a character cost, well, it all depends on your luck to be specific. However, you are guaranteed to get whichever 5 star you like, within 180 pulls. Although it is more likely to be around 150, and if you are lucky, you can get within the 50-50 at 74 starting the PD, or you can just use the global average which is 104 pulls. 
especially if you are starting the game now, the map has plenty of rewards in terms of Primo Gems that you can get. Speaking of the map, oh boy, is this map big! As you explore the game and encounter the statues of the Seven, you will slowly unlock the map. As you go unlocking the map, you will see that the map only keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's similar to the Elden Ring experience. You start your journey on Mondstadt. Beside the Mondstadt there is the sub-area of Dragon's Spine. The second main region is Liwe, with its sub-area being the chasm. The chasm you will see it above ground, but mostly of its exploration is actually underground. The third region is called Inazuma. Inazuma is divided between many islands, some being inhabited and others not. However, in the island of Watatsumi, there is also the sub-area called Enkonomiya. Enkonomiya is the darkest sub-area and area in general of Genshin Impact so far. It also contains a lot of the game's lore. The fourth region is called Sumeru. The nation of knowledge divides itself into two areas of exploration. First, we have the forest, where we have the city of Sumeru, and we also have a large and vast desert. The desert mostly is desert on its surface, as the name implies, of course, but however, there are many tombs that you can explore underground. There are also places where you can have oases with lots of puzzles and side stories. And now for the fifth region that is being released right now, Fontaine. Fontaine Kaida also divides itself into two separate explorable areas. We have the surface and underwater exploration. The surface is usually your run of the mill exploration as always, however, underwater it is quite different. Underwater, whichever character you have usually doesn't matter, because all abilities will be the same, even though you can get kinda bland underwater. As far as gaming underwater sections go, I gotta give credits to Genshin, as it is one of the best underwater sections I've ever seen. Also no need to worry about oxygen and stuff like that, you don't have a meter to go back up on the surface, you can just stay underwater as much as you like. Back in 1.0, everyone already knew that the character Shanlin was one of the best there was. However, I never saw anyone talking about characters such as Bennett and Sing Cho, which are just as broken as Cheng Lin, even though all three of them are 4 stars. Which is my current point right here. Outside of the game there is a lot of information available. Whether you like reading or watching videos, there is an option for you. For reading, I will give you two sites to visit that will contain most of the information that you may want. First, we have Kachin Mains. Kachin Mains is a site that you can visit that has a guide to every character basically, which tells you what weapon should you use, what artifact is good, what stats should you prioritize, etc. We also have Project Amber, which gives you general information about the character. Of course, you can get this general information inside the game, but if you don't have a specific character, it is easier to look at Project Amber. If you prefer video, I have two channels to shout out besides myself, of course. I am the only person to my knowledge to compile how to build every single character in a single video. Nevertheless, the two channels that I wanna mention is first Ashikai. Lore in Genshin can be quite reading heavy, however Ashikai does video on lore which makes it more fun. And also for theory crafting and how to deeply build your characters, we have the Jeff 77 As far as gameplay goes, it is pretty simple. You may have already looked at the screen and seen how it is. You have your usual weapons to deal damage to the enemy, but to complicate things, you also have the elemental system. The elemental system lets you use certain elements like fire, which is pyro, and water, which is hydro, to combine their powers and deal a unique elemental reaction. Of course, each element has its combinations and some don't combine at all, however let me explain this one to you. Whenever an enemy is applied with pyro, you can attack him with hydro which will multiply your damage by 2. Of course, this elemental reaction has an internal cooldown. Not only that, but if you apply Hydro first and Pyro later, the reaction will be slightly different. 
because the multiplier will be 1.5 instead of 2. However, the ICD is a bit shorter. If you are a Genshin veteran, don't come after me for every word I say. I'm trying to make the examples here as simple as possible for new players. Nowadays, I struggle to get into other gacha games. Genshin Impact, and especially its combat, it is the best gacha game there is. The elemental system is especially good. There are seven elements in the game, those being Cryo, Pyro, Electro, Hydro, Dendro, Geo and Animal. All elements react with each other, with a few exceptions. For example, Cryo does not interact with Dendro. However, that doesn't mean that you can't use them both together. In fact, some teams use this as an advantage to trigger two reactions at once. Some elements like Geo only interact with Pyro, Hydro, Cryo and Electro and they all form the same reaction, which is called Crystallize. Same thing with Animal, so, however, the reaction for Animal is called Swirl. Of course, if you attack an enemy without the power of elements, you will deal physical damage, which has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. In this point of the video, you might have already started downloading the game, but if you haven't already, my last point is that the game costs zero dollars. That is right ladies and gentlemen, technically this game cannot yank your bank. You can choose to spend your money if you want, however you can beat all of its contents without spending a single dime, just like I do. Of course you can just disregard my advice and just not play the game. But in my opinion, the game is fun, the game costs nothing, and if you don't like the game, you can just stop playing and uninstall. But that is all, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.